Hey there, this is Seth Schaefer from Team Just Cause Robotics, and in today's video, I'll talk about how to make your spinning robots at least a little bit safer by setting up a proper fail-safe and arming switch on your radio of choice to make it so that if your radio's battery dies or the radio is dropped or loses connection during a fight, your robot doesn't run away with the weapon active. Having a radio that has the ability to set fail-safes with the receiver from the radio side is definitely really great. But there are some rare cases where you might have a receiver that requires the failsafe to be set on the receiver itself, like I have in Mini Mulcher. So I'll be covering how to do that, and how to set up failsafes from the radio side with both the common FSI6 radio, and very common Tenaris QX7 and other OpenTX-based radios. This is an example of what happens when your failsafes are set up improperly. I just shut off the radio, and have no control over the robot. Nothing that I do here is being listened to anymore. When I turn the radio back on, I can instantly resume control. Note, I'm doing this with a 3D printed weapon and I have it intentionally set to do this so that the weapon is spinning at a slow enough speed that it can't really hurt me. In order to fix this, what you have to do for the FS2A receiver is completely pull the robot apart, get to the receiver, and press a button on the receiver and hold it down for a few seconds while you have the radio sending the signals that you want to be sent to the robot to keep it still. So let me show how to do that now. First, I'm going to turn off the robot, which I have to do with the radio on because right now it would be freaking out otherwise. Now I can turn the radio off because the robot is off. Next, we just pull the robot apart. So now I've got the lid off, and we can see inside the robot. So this is the receiver, the FS2A receiver. And basically, the problem with this receiver is that it doesn't give a crap what signal you might have told the radio to send just before it turns off. It's going to just do whatever it feels like. And this receiver has like its own onboard memory to determine what type of signal it should send when there's no signal from the radio. So let me turn this on and you'll see what happens when I turn it back off. So imagine the batteries in the radio just died or something and it turns off. The robot's trying to go in a circle and spin the weapon at about 10% throttle. So to fix this, all we have to do is make sure the radio is sending exactly what signals we want it to be sent. And then we just hold down a button so there's this button right here. All you have to do is hold that down until the light blinks. So you just heard that it rearmed, and that confirms that it is now going to send that particular signal when the radio shuts off. So now we no longer have a runaway robot. And I can demonstrate this again by intentionally having it so that the weapon is going and the robot's trying to turn. And I turn it off. So you can see, again, I have no control over the robot, but now it does what we want it to do. That is how to set up fail safes with this FS2A receiver, and that will work regardless of what radio you're using with this particular receiver, because again, this receiver ignores what signal you may have programmed from the radio side. So I want to go over how to set fail safes on the FSI6 as well. So for this controller, uh, the menu system is annoying because you have to use the cancel button, you have to hold it down for a few seconds to accept changes. So I actually am recording this the second time since I forgot about that the first time. So first things first, hold OK, press OK. Then you're in the, the system menu, go down to RX setup, go down to fail safe. Now within here, we can set the fail safe percentage for each channel. To do that, you press OK to select the channel, and then you move the stick channel of that particular setting to whatever you want and then press OK. So if I move this up here, and then I press OK, this is actually the uh, up and down here, press OK. You can see it's now at 55%. I actually want it pretty much where it is now. I have negative three because of the trims. And then here again, that's the uh, left and right. I want that there because of the trims. And channel three is the throttle. I want that all the way down. So I actually went negative 114%, whatever, it still works. negative under three that's fine and then you hold cancel to confirm so this is for mini mulcher where i don't have a bi-directional weapon 
for a robot like Division that I do have set up with a bidirectional weapon. Um, I'll show you that now. Model select, Division, hold cancel. And then arc setup and fail safe. And so here you can see I set channel three to zero because like I said, this would be full weapon reverse, full weapon forward, and then zero with the way that I have division set up on this radio. And then hold cancel, and then hold cancel again to confirm those changes. And the high pitch beep indicates that I've confirmed the change. So I go back to mini mulcher, you can see fail safe here is confirmed at 103% as well. I'll show an example of how this would be bad if I set it wrong. So I'll do this with the drive motor. So I set the drive to like 10 or something. And then I turn the radio off. And you can see the drive is, you know, the robot's able to move and stuff. It'll probably turn in place now. So if I turn the radio off, it's gonna give me a warning because the model's still powered. So now it's basically fail safe wrong. This is what would an example of failsafe being set incorrectly. The drive motor is trying to run while I don't want it to. So to change that, turn the radio back on. Come on, there we go. Now it's listening to the radio again. So I go middle button, page button, or you can actually just scroll up. I didn't realize that. Scroll up <laughs> to get to failsafe, go to set, and then set this to zero. And then you for channel three probably want this to be like negative 100 and not zero. So yours, most likely you would want to be this for your weapon if it's not a bi-directional weapon like mine. For me, I set it to zero so that I don't have the robot running weapon in full reverse when it has to fail save. Come on, the dial like has so much acceleration to it. There we go. So now you can see if I turn the radio off, the robot no longer moves. I'll also give a better demo with the weapon because that'll be easier to see, again, that it's working with both. So if I arm the weapon, spin it up, all right, let's just say the weapon's running, I turn the radio off or the battery dies or it drops or something, motor stops. That's exactly what we want. So that makes it so that this robot will be safe if the radio dies and the little fighter, what have you. And you can see I get this throttle warning, the throttle's not all the way down, that's also very helpful with this radio. Um, and the FSI-6 does the same thing. If you turn this on with the throttle up, it'll give a throttle warning and a switch warning. So one other nice safety feature that you can have is arming. So for arming, basically what you can do is have it so that whenever a certain switch is in like the down position in this case or up position if you prefer you have a radio that allows you to do that um, you can have it so that basically the robot doesn't obey the throttle command whatsoever um, so i can give a demonstration of that i'm going to switch the robot on and then show you what happens with the arming switch on and the arming switch off with the weapon so right now the robot is armed because this is the arming switch that i've set the switch a and it is in the up position which means that the arming is, right now the robot is armed, or arming is engaged, not disengaged. So the throttle basically behaves normally in this mode. However, if I flip the switch down, the throttle is now disarmed. So basically the weapon's disarmed and I don't have to worry about it. So this is what I like to do when I'm loading robots into the arena. I have a switch programmed on my radio so that it is in a position where I know that the throttle won't be doing anything no matter what, and the drive still works no matter so I can get into my corner or square or whatever and then arm the weapon and do a nice little twitch test or what have you. This way, I know that if I bump the radio while I'm loading the robot in and just remove the weapon lock, it won't like rip my hand off or something. So a really great way to have an extra little bit of safety. So to set this up on the FSI-6, it's a little bit less straightforward than on most radios because there isn't like an actual menu setting just for setting up arming. So what you actually have to do is set up a throttle hold at 0%. So go to the menu option for switches assign first. In this menu, we are going to assign, whoops, we're going to assign the throttle hold to be 
on switch A. I mean, you can set it to whatever switch you want. I would just not set it to switch C because switch C is a three position switch. Um, but you could set it to, I prefer A because it's next to the throttle. You could set it to B if you really want to. Um, the only problem with this radio is that whenever you turn it on, it forces the switches to all be in the up position and you can only set it so that throttle hold is on when the switch is in the down position, which is really stupid. Um, and that's one of the reasons I moved to another radio because I'd much prefer that when I turn the radio on, it's disarmed every time and then I can arm it separately. But anyway, uh, the throttle hold, you can use the up and down arrows, or sorry, you press OK to cycle through these options and then use the up and down arrows to choose which switch is which. So I set it to switch A, and you can see that on or off just confirms basically what position the switch is in. So with the switch down, it's on, with the switch up, it's off. And then you hold cancel to accept this. And now I'm gonna go down to throttle hold, press OK, and now you can see hold is on, and it says not engaged. If I flip the switch down, it'll just say engaged. That engaged or not engaged is what the switch position is on, but hold on or off is whether or not the robot's gonna comply with it. So you have to hold, press OK to get to hold or value. So press OK and when it's, the arrow's on hold, you can use up and down to change it from on to off. So you wanna make sure it's on, on. Then press OK and on the value, you use up and down basically to determine what throttle percentage it will be set to when this is engaged. So you'll actually see, if I flip this on, it's now actually going to obey that percentage. Even, whoops. It's gonna obey that percentage no matter what I do with the throttle stick. Because this is what basically as if I had set it to arm to 20% instead of arm to 0%. So you want it to arm to 0% if you have a weapon that only spins in one direction. On division, I actually had to set it to 50% because my weapon goes in both directions. So now you hold cancel to Accept it on division. This would be the 50. Per this would be a zero percent throttle. This would be a hundred percent forward, and this would be a hundred percent reverse on the weapon. That's the reason I had to set it for 50 percent on division. But on pretty much anyone else's robot, I think most people have their weapon set to only go one way. In which case, zero percent is zero percent, 50 percent is 50 percent forward, and 100 percent is 100 percent forward, as opposed to it being zero in the middle, negative 100 and 100. So yeah, now if I were to load the robot into the arena and accidentally bump the stick or whatever, it's not gonna murder me. But as soon as I get in the arena, and by the way, this is still able to drive and everything, I flip this on and now I have full weapon control. I'm gonna be showing how to do this with the much more complicated OpenTX menu system on the Tenaris QX7. I have this switch here set as my arming switch. By default, right now in the position it's in, the robot is disarmed, so if I turn the radio off, and I had this in the arming position, when I turn it on, it gives me a switch warning. That is called switch SF. You can also see this one here is switch SD. So it needs to have SD in the top position to make sure the weapon's going the right way, and have the SF switch in the disarmed position so I know that the robot is disarmed. So now when I turn the robot on, I have some blue tape on the motor so you can see if it's spinning without the weapon on here because I don't want to kill myself. Um, right now, throttle does nothing because the robot is disarmed. I arm it with this switch, and now it's spinning this way. And then if I flip this switch, now it's spinning the other way. And then with that off, it's disarmed even with, no matter what I do with the throttle. I also have it, you might have noticed it breaks really fast there. Uh, basically for whatever reason, I need to be at like trimmed up a bit or else it'll break. So in normal operation, when I go down to zero, normal operation going down to zero, it doesn't break. But when I have this switch flipped, it will break just as an extra safety measure. So I know the weapon will stop right away. If the radio loses connection, I drop it, battery dies, etc., etc. So I'm just gonna leave that disarmed for now. And let's go into the menu settings that actually change that. All right, so with division on this radio, I have to go page up, or sorry, press the middle button, then page to get to division, and now a page to move through the pages. So I have all my things configured on the mixes page. This right here is basically where I'm saying switch SD, which again is this switch here, changes the direction of the weapon. So you can see it actually lights up in bold what is currently active. 
So when I swap that up, that's bold because it's not down. That exclamation point means not, which is basically the same thing as anything but this. So anything but down is going to be forwards. The only reason I have it set that way instead of just down is backwards and up is forwards because this is actually a three position switch. So I basically made it so that in the middle position and in the up position, the weapon runs forwards, but in the down position, it runs backwards. Um, and then I have it so that you can see it goes basically um, that 50 is just saying what the weight is. So if I go into this, you can see it's an offset of 50 and a weight of 50. That offset of 50 is to make it so that it starts at the middle position instead of starting at zero, because otherwise it would be like full reverse up to being full or full stop. So it'd be full reverse up to stopped instead of being like stopped to full forward or whatever. So I'm just gonna exit out of this because I don't wanna adjust that. Okay, so arming, as I called it, is this one here. Okay, hold down the button. All right, <laughs> so hold down the button to select. Then I go to edit so you can see what's going on. So I just called it arm so that I know which is which. So right here, this is the important bit, basically a weight of zero. And then I have the offset at zero so that it's dead center, um, basically off. Um, so that's really all that it is, is I'm making it so that whenever this is active, it is at zero throttle. Um, for a non-bidirectional weapon, yours might to be need to be like negative 100, but for mine, it's zero. So what this accomplishes is this. I have the arming switch active, I can control the weapon, I have the arming switch deactivated and the weapon stops. And then it no longer loses the throttle. So again, I can load the robot into the arena with this disarmed and know that even if I bump the throttle, it won't rip my hand off. I just wanna show a better example of what exactly is going on with the arming switch um, using this channel monitor. So right now you can see channels one and two respond to what I do with this stick as you would ex expect. I'm also using the Draconid profile to show an example of a non-bidirectional weapon because I think this is more applicable to most people's use cases. Um, so channels three and four, I actually have both linked to being the throttle channel because I use two motors to drive Draconid's weapon, but on most people's robots with just one channel controlling the weapon, you just see channel three doing exactly what channels four is doing anyway. So I can control the throttle now with the robot armed. Now that I flip the arming switch into the armed position and it does exactly what you'd expect all the way down at all the way down, all the way up at all the way up, but I flip the switch back and then it's locked all the way down. And I'll show you exactly what that looks like in the settings as well. So I go to the mixes page. You can see here channel three weapon is simply set so that it is disarmed whenever the uh, SF switch is down. So it's only, or, or it's up rather. So it's down, the weapon is armed. When it's up, weapon is disarmed. And I have it set the same exact weight for channel four as for channel three, because again, I have dual motor drive, but this is all you need to have. And then if I edit this, you can see exactly what the settings are. So the weight is 100 and the offset is zero. So that is what you would need for controlling your weapon normally. And then the only setting you really need to change is make it so that, that the switch for that is SF down. So you just activate this option, flip the switch down, and then select it again to lock in that option. And then you can see for the disarming, set it that, I have it set so that you select the switch and make it SF up, select again, and then make sure that the weight is set to zero exactly, and that the offset is set to negative 100 exactly. And then you can exit and it will have already saved that. No needing to like hold a button to confirm it like you do for the uh, weirdness on um, the FSI-6. I can also show you here, I have my 
drive mixing setup, and you'll see I actually have um, two mixes added to channels one and two for the drive. That makes it so that this SD switch here is a directional flip switch so that the robot drives backwards if I get flipped upside down, basically to make it drive forwards again. Uh, but you can see the settings I have for that. I'm not going to go into exactly, you know, all the button pushes and stuff to set that up. But if you were interested to see how to program an invert switch, this is how. If this video helped you out, you can help me by hitting the like button on this video and let me know in the comments. Also, if you want to see more guides and tutorials, make sure to subscribe. Prior viewers may have noticed up to this point that this video looks and sounds a little different than any of mine in the past. That's because I ended up getting a Sony ZV-1 camera for Hanukkah so I could step up my game here with the video quality. I hope this will also eventually save me a lot of editing work. I recorded the entirety of this video up till now with no script writing beforehand, and all of the audio was captured in camera with the built-in microphone, so it's a little bit noisy, but saved a lot of effort with synchronizing the audio separately that I would otherwise have had to do. I will admit not using a script probably ate up all the time that I saved though, as I ended up needing to slice up all of the footage and reorder everything I'd recorded, so next time I'll prepare a lot better. Hopefully this was simple enough to follow and will remain useful for everyone with these sorts of radios. This new camera opens up a lot of possibilities though. For one thing, with a bit of specialized lighting I can now record up to 960 frames a second, which results in up to 40 times slower than real-time footage. I hope this will let me capture some of the crazy physics that happens with robot collisions and weapon hits, but I'll still need a while to figure out the best way to film that without risking damaging this $700 camera. For another, the ZV-1 has an incredibly fast autofocus and it's great at adjusting for lighting conditions, which saves me a lot of color correction work in post, and from needing to reshoot things five times to get the look right. On the other hand, there are about a million manual settings and controls that if used right will be able to make much more professional videos, but that'll take a lot more learning on my part. It'll take me a while to incorporate this properly into my editing workflow effectively, so forgive me for the relative simplicity of this video. Long videos like this already always take forever, and this was still more than 8 hours of work to put together. If you have any other ideas for what I should do now that I have a proper camera, let me know. That's all I have for you today. Thanks for watching.